Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his, his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God, God and Father, we, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise, praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son of the, of the Father, Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, you, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? 
And supposing him to be the gardener, Mary said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and sisters and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Easter began in darkness. If this is a true story, it has to begin in darkness, or why would we listen? Darkness is so real, and there's so much of it. We are all keenly aware of the most current statistics as we hear and see what horror is going on in the world today. Hannah Arendt, writing about the Holocaust, observes that the ultimate horror of human evil is to be seen not in the spectacular, some sudden or utterly shocking outburst of evil. The ultimate horror of human evil, she says, is when evil becomes an ordinary, everyday, ongoing event. The banality of evil, she calls it. It is not just that it is bad news, it's that we get used to it. Easter begins in the darkness of a tomb where the broken body of Jesus is laid. In this perilous moment of a global crisis, we are all too familiar with that neighborhood. Many of us viewing from home acknowledge in the midst of the coronavirus lives and dreams broken and damaged, broken by grief for a lost loved one, broken by anger and bewilderment over a lost job, broken by the loss of freedom, broken by a loss of compromised health or security or dreams or finances. A friend shared with me that his washing machine broke, that he called someone to fix it, but who in turn told him that it was damaged beyond repair. We get used to a world in which some things and some people are damaged beyond repair. If you think that the world is broken and damaged and bent on destruction, that there are a million facts to prove it, and that there's not a blessed thing you or I or anyone can do about it, then you're not alone. We're all used to it, really. And so what is often said on Easter is this. These are the facts. This is the way things are. Now explain the resurrection. We're not here to explain the resurrection, but to challenge the world. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a challenge to the facts that have a hold on us. We are here to announce that the world is no longer in the grip of the same old facts of sin and death, but rather that the world is in the grip of a loving God. Insurance companies use the term an act of God when referring to claims in the aftermath of perhaps a hurricane or a natural disaster. Do you want to know what I think? When I hear people call someone on the telephone and say, I just had to hear your voice and let you know that I love you and that I miss you. When people reach out to those who are considered to be high risk, when people and businesses pause to say thank you to doctors and nurses, scientists, first and community responders, when people make sure that the hungry are fed and the lonely not forgotten, that's an act of God. Our God raised Jesus from the dead and that God is in charge 
and can be trusted because Jesus lives. We know that no one and nothing is beyond repair. We are gathered this morning to become inspired by the hope that is so evident. As God rocked the world on Easter day, we have been put here on this earth to sing God's praises, to live under the lighted rainbow of our baptismal vows together in order that we might rock the world for Christ. If you think that's a big assignment, it is. But let me remind you of something. Easter began not with Caesar or Pilate or Herod or any of the others who make things happen. Easter began with a confused but courageous young woman with a troubled past named Mary Magdalene. Early on Sunday morning, Mary makes her way to the tomb and when she sees that the stone, which should be covering the entrance, has been rolled away, she immediately goes back and informs Simon Peter and the beloved disciple. She sees the empty tomb, but turns around and leaves? That's Easter? Can we identify? This is a lot like us. We want to have Easter, but we want things to return to normal. We want the resurrection, but don't want it to change too much right now. Like Mary and the disciples, we are reasonably well-adjusted to the way things are. We don't expect our world to be rocked, at least with good news. Let me tell you about a little girl who had it just right. I was visiting a friend last year with her two children. We thought it would be a good idea to get started on dying Easter eggs. After getting all the colors lined up in small glasses and after explaining to the five and six year old that they had to be very careful and gentle with fragile eggs, we jumped right in and got to work. Things went fine with a six year old who managed to dip her eggs into the colored cups and get them with a bit of help into the holders to dry. But when the five year old took her turn, things were a bit wobblier. Be careful, we said, as she held the egg in the wire dipper over the green dye. And sure enough, as she lowered the egg into the glass, she dropped it and it cracked and it fell. The little girl's mother and I looked at each other and just waited for her to cry. But instead she looked up with an excited smile, shouted out, look, mine is hatching. Now that is Easter hope. And the gospel tells us something amazing happened. It's not until Jesus calls Mary by name that she recognizes who he is. Here, one may remember Jesus' earlier words when he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. And the sheep hear my voice. He calls his own name by calls his own sheep by name and leads them out in her excitement mary turns and cried out rabboni which means teacher what an indescribable thing to know that jesus knows you by name things have not simply returned to normal things are not back to the way they used to be before his arrest and execution. Jesus' resurrection marks the beginning of a new era, an entirely new way of life. Easter is a caution. Be careful what we get used to. God challenges the so-called facts, the way things are. In the resurrection, God redefines normal. An interview once asked Archbishop Desmond Tutu, why are you so holy? He replied, you sound as if holiness were abnormal. To be holy is normal. To be anything else is abnormal. To live 
in the hope of Jesus' resurrection is normal. Anything else is abnormal. Easter should make us radically discontented with the things we get used to. Easter is not one exceptional day that is observed and then put away when things get back to normal. Easter is about the Lord sending us away from the darkness of the tomb of St. John's Church to perform an act of God. It's about telling the desperately hungry and unhealthy world that the God of Jesus is good and that what God did with the dead body of Jesus, God wants to do with every child of God. Easter is about forming courageous people like Mary to set free from grief and sorrow, to live joyous, generous, and holy lives for Christ's sake. And Easter is about making churches, assemblies from every family, language, people, and nation, members who have nothing else in common than Jesus Christ. Notice that Peter rocks the world in acts. The Holy Spirit changed Peter's notions about who are normally the people of God. He says, God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you come from. If you want God and are ready to do so, and he says, the door is open. And that is not a bad mission statement for this or any other church. The door is open. But precisely, because we cannot worship inside our church temporarily, we are being sent out there into the world. I can tell you that when you leave the empty tomb and go out there, that's exactly when God shows up. And more times than not, it's because someone spoke the word of the Lord. Now is the time to get clear on what God is saying to us, to uncloud our minds, to not be self-absorbed, but to focus on God's Word. Our purpose here as a resurrection community is to finish what our elder brother Jesus started. You all know the work of the great Puccini, Madame Butterfly, La Boheme, Tosca, are some of his familiar and most famous works. In 1922, Puccini was stricken with cancer. It was his desire to write one more opera. He began what would be his final work, Turandot. His students kept asking him, but maestro, what if you die and never complete it? His response was, then my disciples will finish it. Never mind. In 1924, he did die, and his disciples did finish it. It premiered in Milan, Italy, in the La Scala Opera House under the baton of Bocchini's most famous student, Arturo Toscanini. The performance went well until they came to the place where Puccini had stopped just before he died. Toscanini stopped put down his baton, turned to the audience, and with tears running down his face said, This the master wrote. And then the master said, and then he faintly shouted to the audience after he died, but his disciples had finished his music. Our purpose is to finish what our Lord began. I hope you will accept this challenge to perform an act of God. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People for Easter Joined by those who will be newly baptized in Christ and filled with joy on this Queen of Feasts, let us offer prayers to God, who fills the darkness of the world with the light of Christ. For the Holy Churches of God, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the Presiding Bishop, Chip, our Bishop, and all Bishops, for Ron, our priest, and Keith, our deacon. For presbyters, deacons, seminarians, religious, and all who minister in Christ's name, and all the holy people of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For those in troubled lands, such as Haiti, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, and Venezuela, Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank, Iraq, Iran, and Syria, Nigeria, Yemen, Somalia, and South Sudan, North Korea and South Korea, China, Myanmar, and Afghanistan. For all nations, peoples, tribes, clans, and families, that they may know your name. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For those in positions of public trust, especially Donald the President, Philip the Governor, and Dennis the Mayor of this community, and the leaders of all our communities, for justice, mercy, peace in all the world. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For this time, when so many are ill with the coronavirus, and others fear that they are or will be, that we may know your love is always with us. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For all who are sick, afflicted, or oppressed, especially those we name in our hearts. For all those in need, for all the suffering and the oppressed, for travelers, refugees, and prisoners, glory and praise to you, O living God. For the dying and the dead, in particular those who we remember, and for those who remember them in the hope of the resurrection. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the people of this parish, for those celebrating birthdays this week, for those celebrating their wedding anniversary this week, for those connected to our parish who are serving in our armed forces, for ourselves, our friends, and families, and all those we love. Glory and praise to you, O living God that our Savior may grant us triumph over our visible and invisible enemies, and that with him we may crush beneath our feet the Prince of Darkness and all evil powers. Glory and praise to you, O living God. That Christ may fill us with the joy and happiness of his holy resurrection, and that we may enter the chamber of the divine wedding feast to rejoice without limit with the angels and saints. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering our most glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Francis, Blessed Mary Magdala and her companions, Blessed John the Evangelist, our patron, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Hear our prayers, which we offer in the hope of eternal glory, and grant that we, who have received new life in baptism, may live forever in the joy of the resurrection. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. From these last days you sent him to be incarnate by the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. For the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary, Joseph, Francis, John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, a great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect to do his will, that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and your loved ones this day, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.